Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we'll learn about how to use Lua programming in Stingray to make a simple application, um, as well as learn some of the basic concepts in Stingray, such as uh, different initialization files, the concept of a unit, uh, data compilation, and so on. So first of all, a quick description of the application we'll be building. Our application has three models, a floor, four lights, and a simple UI. Uh, you can adjust the uh, slider value to change the light intensity. Uh, and you can uh, click on these different buttons to uh, toggle between different models. And you can also push the number key corresponding to each model um, to switch back and forth be between the models as well. Um, these models are actually built using Autodesk Memento that uses uh, photo photogrammetry techniques to extract uh, 3D structures from pictures and generates a dense point cloud as well as a textured mesh that is uh, almost game ready. So in this tutorial we'll learn how to build this application using Lua scripting. Um, note that Stingray ships with a Lua application framework called the AppKit. Uh, in this tutorial we'll avoid the use of uh, any Lua frameworks uh, which while uh, making some routine tasks easier can obscure many important concepts that are important to understand. Uh, you note that the UI in this application has been built using uh, Scaleform Studio, which is our new non-flashed version of Scaleform. Uh, Scaleform Studio is uh, fully integrated into Stingray, uh, allowing you to easily load uh, Scaleform Studio scenes, uh, receive uh, UI events, uh, install Lua event handlers for uh, various UI events, um, and then uh, send information back to your UI. So we won't be um, uh, delving too much into Scaleform Studio in this tutorial. However, we will see uh, how to write uh, Lua event handlers to respond to various UI events. Um, in this tutorial, that will be uh, changing the, the slider value um, and uh, clicking on the buttons corresponding to the models. Now, uh, let's go to the Stingray editor <coughs> and see what we have in our, pr in our uh, scene. So if we uh, look at the Explorer, we'll see that in our scene we have um, a floor, a camera, uh, four lights, and uh, our unit. It's called uh, Mahavir. <coughs> and uh, notice that uh, there are two ways to run your application in Stingray Editor. You can either uh, push Run Project or you can uh, push uh, the Play button, which is uh, test level. So currently, the way things are set up, uh, your project must use the uh, app kit in order for uh, the test level button to work properly. Uh, since our project uh, is a is a bare bones project, it's designed to show you um, Lua programming from from first principles. It does not use any of the abstraction in uh, the app kit. So therefore, you must use the uh, run project button in order to launch your project. All of the Lua code uh, in our pro in our application is in the boot.lua file. Uh, you can open that up in the uh, uh, Stingray uh, script editor, and we'll uh, uh, we'll go through this this Lua file in detail. But before before you do that, um, you might be wondering how does Stingray know uh, which Lua file to to load in w when you, when you start your project? Um, that that information is uh, specified in the uh, settings file, uh, which if you if you open up the settings file, and in, uh, by the way, the settings file is located in uh, in the root directory for your project. So if you look at the uh, settings or any file, the first line, uh, the, the boot script is what tells Stingray uh, the name of the uh, Lua file to load. Uh, now before we delve into uh, boot.lua, let's examine a few important concepts around Stingray. Um, you'll notice that uh, in your project directory, uh, when, you, uh, when you create a new project, um, Stingray will uh, automatically run the data compiler and create a uh, project name underscore uh, data directory. So uh, the data compiler is a uh, separate uh, system of Stingray that compiles your assets into uh, binary blocks of data that are sent to the Stingray engine um, by the Stingray file server. Uh, so, so this architecture uh, neatly separates the uh, Stingray engine from the level editing tools, um, allowing you to uh, restart or, or, um, or close the engine process uh, independently of the editor, uh, as well as launch the engine on multiple platforms. So for example, in our level viewport, 
um, the uh, the level uh, viewport as well as the uh, asset preview window are uh, two separate instances of the uh, of the stingray renderer that is rendering on the window handle corresponding to uh, to each of these windows so if I click on uh, my model here uh, this uh, what you see in the asset preview window this is being rendered onto this window by a separate stingray process so in your if you open up your task manager you, you can see that um, there'll be two stingray um, engine.exe uh, processes running uh, for each of these two windows um, <coughs> Now, so now uh, the other important thing is that Stingray is a highly uh, data-driven system, <coughs> and um, mo most of your asset files are uh, are in JSON format uh, that contains uh, uh, key-value pairs for uh, to for your properties. And as an example of that, we can take a look at um, our level file. Um, so let's open up the level file, which is located here. And you can see that uh, this level file contains um, uh, JSON uh, structures that correspond to all of the different things that you have in your level. So you, we have four lights, uh, we have camera. So I can I can search for, say for example, light two. And uh, you can see that uh, there's light two, and it contains uh, all the properties that we uh, define for our light. Um, in the editor. So for example, this light is positioned at uh, minus 30, 55, 0. Um, if I click on my light 2, um, I can see that uh, the same position in the, in the, in the property window. Um, the other uh, important thing to understand is the concept of a unit. Uh, so we have, uh, we have mentioned the word unit a number of times, and you might be wondering what exactly is a unit. So a unit is similar to a template. Now on the disk, a unit is a JSON file that contains the key value pairs for the uh, properties of an obje object. Um, for example, if you look at the uh, camera unit, um, so if we go to Notepad, and I already have our camera unit open, and uh, incidentally that is located in your uh, uh, Stingray uh, binary core units. Uh, you, you can see that uh, it contains all of the um, properties that you would, that you would expect a camera unit to have, such as uh, the projection type, the field of view, um, the uh, near and the far plane, and so on. <coughs> Another important thing to uh, to know about is the the console window, um, which is located here, um, the external console, and this allows you to see um, the output from from Lua. So for example, if you um, have a uh, print statement in your Lua file, uh, you can you can see that in the console window. It also prints um, some uh, messages generated from the system as well as allows you to pause and unpause the game. So for example, um, here's my Stingray app, uh, uh, application. And now if I uh, go to the uh, console window, I can do a game pause, and that will pause my game. Um, and I can also th then, if I want to restart the game, I just do a game and pause. And this also allows you to uh, reload, hot reload, uh, any Lua changes by pushing a control R. So, for example, if you make a change in your Lua script, you can hot reload it um, at, in the console window by pushing a control R. Okay, so now let's um, go to our boot.lua uh, and um, go through the logic needed to implement this the functionality in this demo. So in our boot.lua uh, the three main functions to uh, to understand are the init function, the update function, and the render function. So these three uh, uh, functions are called from the Stingray core, and uh, you will implement most of your uh, application logic in these functions. Um, now, in a real game project, uh, you will likely only have a, just a little bit of code in your boot.lua, and your uh, game logic will be distributed over a number of Lua files. However, in this demo, in order 
to keep things simple, we have implemented um, everything, uh, all of all of the logic in this file. Um, so you know, so we keep things in one place, and you understand how everything uh, works together. So now uh, let's uh, let's quickly go through all of these functions. Um, so the you know the first thing we do in the init function um, is to create a new world. Uh, we set the viewport on it. We load our level, um, which is um, which is uh, in our content folder. So our level is located uh, right here. This is the level we load here. Um, we spawn the background, and then we load um, our UI, uh, which is uh, uh, made using Scaleform Studio. Uh, Scaleform Studio files have an extension of uh, S2D uh, project, um, and all of the assets corresponding to your UI are located in the UI Memento UI folder. So that would be um, the UI folder. And here's here's uh, where all of your all of the uh, different bitmaps, the the Lua files, etc., corresponding to the UI are situated. So we are not going to go into detail about how the UI itself is implemented. We'll probably have a separate tutorial about um, uh, using Scaleform Studio. In this tutorial, we'll just stay focused on um, uh, implementing the logic that you see in this application. Now, he, uh, the, these three lines help us to capture the mouse focus. Um, next, we create event listeners, um, which are the the functions that we uh, uh, where we're going to be responding to what happens to the UI. So when you click on the buttons, or if you change the, or if you move the slider, um, this is where uh, that uh, logic will be implemented. Uh, moving on to, uh, we create the sharing environment. This is a this is a rendering thing. Uh, for our purposes, we just uh, you know, just we just uh, use the midday um, sharing environment, and then we spawn our unit. So this is uh, this is this is a way you would spawn uh, a unit in Stingray. So the camera unit is, as we saw before, uh, located in core units and camera, and we use uh, world dot spawn unit uh, to spawn a unit as uh, to spawn the camera unit in our world. And then next we uh, spawn our uh, Mahavir unit, um, which, uh, as you saw, is named SD Mahavir. Um, so this this allows you to search for a unit by a sting name, um, and then um, we uh, store the unit ID corresponding to this unit in in the variable model unit, uh, and then. Th the next thing we do is to obtain the position of this unit and store that in the model position. Now uh, we, the next thing we do is to initialize our light table. So uh, we have four lights in our scene. Um, we uh, s search for each light unit by its name. So we have for called our lights light one, light two, light three, and light four. Uh, we search for these light units. Um, uh, when we obtain the light unit, we store that light unit and its position into um, a light table that we uh, declared in the beginning of our Lua file. Here. Okay. Now let's take a look at that. So that's uh, that's all the logic we have in our init function. Now let's go to the update function and see what happens there. Um, so that we just uh, to, sh to show an example of uh, how you can you know do a print in Lua um, and have that show up in the uh, console. I just have a print in update here, which you can see um, is appearing here in the external console. So it's just a, a useful um, debugging tool. Uh, allows you to see any print statements that you put in our in your Lua code. Um, the uh, the Stingray script editor uh, also allows you to set breakpoints which will uh, go over in, in a separate tutorial. And the other major advantage of using the uh, Stingray script editor over an external editor such as Notepad++ or Sublime is that um, uh, the Stingray st uh, script editor is integrated with our uh, Lua documentation system. So, the, 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 so it allows you to see autocomplete information. So for example, if I type stingray.unit, um, it will tell me um, all the different uh, 
you know functions that are supported by the unit uh, or for example if I do stingray dot uh, quaternion now it will show me all the methods supported by the uh, quaternion table uh, I can also right click on uh, a function and go to the documentation our the uh, stingray help do the reference documentation um, that uh, shows you examples of how to use a function and contains other helpful information okay and uh, you can also see that uh, uh, the uh, stingray editor supports uh, syntax highlighting as well as will um, show you where you have syntax errors in your in your Lua code okay so the first thing we do in the update function is to call the update function on, st on uh, scale form so this will advance all of your uh, scale form studio scenes and then um, I need to send the the key and the mouse input to scale form so that the UI know knows what's happening to the mouse and which keys have been pressed so that is being done here in the uh, send key input and send mouse input and here if you if I just take a look at the send mouse function it simply uh, gets the the the, the um, value the uh, position of the mouse cursor and uh, the state of the left middle and right mouse buttons and uh, sends that to scale form uh, using send message so uh, uh, normally you would have uh, you would sort of hide uh, th this sort of code because this is something that you would do in any application so you normally would have a an abstraction layer that would uh, do all of this stuff for you so that you can easily so, so you can more clearly separate your application logic from this sort of backend logic uh, but uh, we, we have it all here in one file just so, so you can see all the different steps uh, necessary to have this, the all of the functionality in this demo working so uh, the, the next uh, piece of code is what causes the the model to rotate about the z-axis uh, so obtain the uh, local rotation uh, which is a method on the unit um, class um, and then I obtain the position um, I, I um, get the Euler angles I change the the value of um, the, 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 the Z coordinate and then um, apply it back to the unit so the next time when I obtain the the position it, it would be the change position that I'm setting here and so, this, so that is what causes the, the model to rotate about Z. Okay, so um, the next thing is showing how to change the light intensity uh, based on the slider value. So uh, as you saw in the init function, we created um, event handlers here um, that um, are called whenever a, an event arrives from Scaleform Studio, right? So let's let's uh, go to the on custom event function, and here, uh, whenever I get an event with the name button pressed, I um, set the model ID uh, in a in a event handler uh, table. Uh, similarly, for the slider moved uh, event, uh, and in my update function. I check to see if if any of this has happened so if my uh, slider value is not nil then I simply set the intensity of each light source corresponding to the slider value and then I set it back to nil so that this uh, check would only uh, pass if the slider value has changed and there could be multiple ways to implement this but you know this uh, super simple logic uh, works for our purposes um, uh, now on to the uh, logic where you can switch between uh, the different models so you can do that in uh, two ways you can either use the number keys or you can click on the buttons corresponding to the model so um, I check to see if um, I have pressed uh, one of the number keys or or if um, an event or if a UI event has arrived uh, and the model ID has been set so if uh, either of those has happened then 
then I would go and uh, destroy the unit that is currently alive and spawn a new unit corresponding to the model corresponding to the button that has been pressed or the key that key that has been pushed and now I can improve this uh, slightly by checking if the uh, in case this the, the, the the same button has been pressed uh, corresponding to the unit that is already on the scene uh, you know then I don't have to unspawn and respawn so that's something that I can add here in order to improve but um, I was trying to keep things as simple as possible um, the other thing that this model does that actually I did not mention was that you can um, use the W and the Q keys to uh, zoom in and out so if I go back to my sample if I push the Q key, I can zoom in. If I push the W key, I can zoom out. So let's see how that works. And that works by simply changing the camera position depending upon you know which key has been pressed. And now one thing to notice here is uh, that um, um, we have to have this released and pressed logic. Um, because the the key state is uh, reset every frame so pressed only returns true if the key was pressed in the last frame um, so if you press the key um, then uh, pr th this pressed would only return true uh, for the next frame not for the frames subsequent to that so this would work um, uh, f for when we when we use the number keys to change the model it was sufficient for that but um, since um, w while zooming in and in and out, um, we want to to tell if the key has is currently being pressed, not just that it was pressed one time. We need to also um, record the uh, the released event. Um, and uh, so, if the key ha if a, if you press a key but you haven't released it, then we know that the key is held. And so that's uh, essentially what this logic implements. Um, and that's more or less it. Um, so depending upon which key um, is pressed, we change the camera position. Um, you know, either we move it uh, in or out, and that's what uh, implements the the zooming in and out behavior. The render function is uh, just boilerplate. We haven't made any application-specific changes there. We simply render the world from the perspective of our camera. So that's it. Um, hope uh, this uh, tutorial helped you understand uh, Lua programming in Stingray a bit better. Um, we'll be following up with uh, more video tutorials uh, dealing with other aspects of Lua programming, um, Stingray, um, Scaleform Studio, and, and so on. Uh, thank you very much.